Now let's talk about residuals. You can use the residuals function to extract the error term for each data point. So this is the dependent variable values minus the estimates for the intercept and trial type. Um, so let's create a variable called res and set it to the residuals from the analysis we did in the last video. So my LM. Have a quick look at that. It's just up here. So res will be 200 numbers. These will be the calculated error terms. So it's not getting them from the table that we had created before, but calculating them based on um, the linear regression model. So let's plot these. So ggplot and our data table will be that. And then we're going to make a density plot. So geom density. And we'll set our x-axis equal to this res value. We'll ignore the values in dat for now. So that gives us a plot here mean of zero, looks like it might have a standard deviation around 100, but we can double check that. Um, remember from last week's lectures, there's the stat function function that can let us plot um, a normal distribution. So we'll set our function to denorm, that's the function that gives us the values from a normal distribution. Um, and the arguments that denorm will take. In a list, we want the mean to be zero. The mean of all errors is zero. And SD will be what we'd set error SD equal to. So that will be 100. OK. And maybe let's make the color of this one red so we can tell them apart. And here's our exactly normal distribution and we can see that the distribution of error terms that we recovered with the residuals function is really really close to that. We can go back up here into our um, simulation code and let's make the error SD smaller, say 50. Rerun this, re-simulate the data, Plot it again, and run our linear regression. Now we can see here our residual standard error, 47.41, so pretty close to 50. And we can also pull this out, let's reset the standard error to the value we had above. And our recovered residuals are really close again. You can also compare the model residuals to the simulated error values. So if the model is accurate, they should be almost identical. Let's use ggplot to compare this again. Okay, so we'll take ggplot with the data. And first we'll plot um, a perfect slope. So use the function geom abline with a slope of 1, which is what we'd predict if they're identical. So it goes from one corner to the next. Now we want to plot geom point. So we'll set our aesthetic mapping up here. We want this to be the error term from that, and then res the residuals. And here we are. Our error terms that we simulated, that we created in our simulation, are almost perfectly correlated with the residuals that we recovered from the model. There seem to be two lines here, though. So let's 
add in one more aesthetic value. We'll set the color of these points by the trial type. I have a quick look here. And yes, this clearly separates out the congruent and incongruent trials. Because if the intercept estimate is slightly off from what we actually um, simulated, the points will be slightly above or below the black line, this slope of 1. And if the estimate for the effective trial type is slightly off, there will be a systematic difference between residuals for the congruent and incongruent trials. Now, in a real data set, you won't ever know what the actual real error terms are. You can only estimate them from the model if you have um, real data. It's only when you've simulated the data that you know what the error terms are.